In a world filled with a million different ideas and personalities, it's always nice to find a connection. Welcome to Under the Umbrella, a safe space podcast. Here, we will discuss everything inclusive. My name is Angel Lane Allen. I am a life relationship coach, a creator, author, mother, and wife. This is Under the Umbrella, and we are happy to have you with us today. Let's get right into it. Hey, y'all. Hey, welcome to another episode of Under the Umbrella. I am your host, Angel, with Angel Ink Coaching. And I am just like super excited. If you all are watching me, (laughs) if you're watching me on YouTube, you're probably like, holy crap, like my background is different. My hair is different. I have wiped all my hair off. I've colored it, put some highlights in it, I should say. I've moved. I'm now located in Texas, this big sovereign state in the USA. (sighs) I've just done so many changes. So if you listened to the previous episode, allow me to reintroduce myself. I recorded that while I was still in Phoenix, Arizona uh, earlier in the year. So I've had a lot of changes since then. So I hope you all love to do Ladies, if you are afraid to cut your hair, it's hair. It'll go back. Just do something different, you know? <laughs> so on today's episode, I titled this particular episode, You Are No One's Fucking Victim, because I just needed to say that. In spite of any and everything that's ever occurred in your life that's happened for you, not to you, you are no one's fucking victim. Which brings me to me talking about one of my journals. It's a prompted journal called Look Into Your Shadows. It's a beginner's guide to self-healing. As I mentioned previously in the previous episode, I've released five prompted journals and technically three planners, but it's two planners. They're all available on Amazon. I'll be sure to drop the links so that you can purchase them if you choose. I would love the support. Um, they're all available on Amazon. I'll drop the link on YouTube in the description section and whatever platform you're listening to, I'll drop it in there as well. And I thank you all in advance for your love and support as always. So yeah, I know I was I, I was talking a little shit in the previous episode because I was talking about the, the painting behind me. I wanted, that's a huge statement for me. And I want people to, I hate assumptions. However, this one time I want people to assume when they see that painting behind me that I'm under the LGBTQ umbrella, like bisexual woman, married to woman. I've talked about this all before. If you're new to listening to me, please go back and listen to the previous 30 something, 35 episodes. Um, this one is 37. So the other 35, 36 would have been the one that was released last Wednesday. And that's another thing. I have moved the date of release to Wednesday. So I'll be releasing one episode a week, which will be on Wednesdays now. I have so many things I'm working on. So I, me recording for two times out the week, that's a lot for me right now. So sorry. <laughs> but anywho, if you can see behind me on YouTube, you see there's a miniature version of that umbrella with the rainbow colors pouring from up under it behind it however you are I see it so that statement is still behind me so you know in the midst of me talking my shit I, I meant what I said I need to keep that behind me because I want people to make that assumption because that's just what some people do right <laughs> so I am like super proud to talk about my beautiful journey of healing and I say it's beautiful because in essence it makes me a better person for myself first and foremost, which then exudes to the world. You know, it trickles out to everyone else. So one of the journals I wanted to talk about today that I that I released is on Amazon. The name of it is called Look Into Your Shadows. It's a beginner's guide to self-healing. I was so excited about this when I released it. It went number one in its category for 24 hours (laughs) back in November. So I was so, 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 so excited. A friend of mine um, had, you know, sent me a text and and I didn't think anything of it when she sent it because I wasn't paying attention, you know, because everybody was buying it when I posted it on social media. But anyway, it did. It went number one in its category for a whole 24 hours. I was super excited. And I claim in my life that this will go number one again for days, if not weeks. 
And this just is a personal goal of mine. So I'm super excited about that. Those of you who have purchased this thus far, thank you all so much. It literally is one of my personal number one selling journals on Amazon. I have to be very specific saying that because I don't want people to think it's number one right now in this moment and go on there and be like, girl, this is number 567. <laughs> you know? It is not. It's not number one right now, but back in November for 24 hours, it was. So I'm uber excited about that. I'm very grateful and thankful for that. So with that being said, um, I am very, 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 very aware of so many people being through so much turmoil, if not hell, in their minds and what they've been through in life. We all have. We've experienced our version of hell in our life to some degree. Whether that be rape, molestation, mental abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, whether you've experienced abandonment, whether that be from, you know, mom, dad, what guardian, whomever, sexual assault, whether you've been discriminated upon, experienced racism, been called a dyke, a fag, a nigger, a slut, a whore, a homewrecker. You were told you were never amount to anything. Fill in the blank. We've all been through some form of hell in our own lives. And a lot of us have learned to bury those things so deep within us. Um, and I'll get personal for a second just to put my own personal experience out there. In the midst of me doing some digging within myself, I had buried within me a sexual assault that occurred in my life when I was about 17 years old. I caught myself going on a date with a gentleman at that time. I don't remember his age or his name. I kept a black book. I remember for the longest with that information, but you know, it's long gone from my memory. However, he was, you know, 18, 19, not, not around my age at the time. And long story short, I was sexually assaulted. I won't get into the details and, and all of that kind of stuff, but I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried for a week after that came up for me because I had buried it. I totally forgot about it. And I was just mad, just mad, like, damn, I don't, how did I bury this so deep that I did, I didn't remember it happening to me. But one way that I was able to face all of that after it came up, you know, every nitty, nitty gritty detail and, you know, the bastard had the audacity to take me back home and offered to take me shopping to apologize for what he had tried to do. He wasn't successful in raping me, but it still was a sexual assault. You know, just crazy. Like, who does that? Like, you attack somebody and then you want to take them shopping. Like, just weird, weird, stupid shit. And for me, with with that, you know, because you sit in that and you you try to figure out the how, why, why did that happen to me, and what could have been different, and you start feeling some kind of way about yourself. And for me, what I had to do, of course. Nobody ever deserves to be raped, molested, sexually assaulted, harassed in any kind of way. Nobody deserves any of those things. But for me, and I'm stressing this for me, I had to get to a point where I looked at the situation and yes, he was absolutely wrong. But I looked at the situation to see how to take my power back, how to become empowered after reliving that moment because I judged myself. I was trying not to, but I judged myself like, damn, like, how did you end up in a situation like that? And for me, again, what I did was I sat and, and just really sat, 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 sat in all of that and, and was like, what could have been different? And what I came up with was that could have been prevented had I trusted my intuition, my gut instinct. We all have it. A lot of people like to say a woman's intuition. It's not a woman's intuition. We all have intuition. We all have discernment. 
have to tap in and in and exercise it. But I had this butterfly feeling in my tummy, but I still left, still went with this person. And had I trusted my intuition and not went with that person, that would not have happened to me. That is factual. But I still got in the car and and left. And unfortunately, that occurred to me. And, you know, some of you may be listening to that like, that is crazy. I'm not excusing what that person did. So please don't think I'm excusing the behavior and what happened to me. Never would I. However, for me, in order to truly heal from that experience, I had to look at it in a sense of how could I have, how could they have been different? I can't change what happened, but how could they have been different so that I can empower myself and talk about this without crying? Because it was, it was, it was hard, you know, and then you have so many people out here who think that people are gay or a lesbian or bisexual because they've been through some type of sexual um, assault or molestation or rape and they think that's the reason something had to happen to you that's the way that's why you're the way you are <laughs> no <laughs> no 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 no. like I said I buried that so fucking deep within me and once I started doing my shadow work um that came up it came up you'll be surprised if you truly tap into yourself and just sit with yourself the things that just come up and you, for me, you know, you sit with it. You sit with those emotions. You sit with that experience and you empower yourself. Yeah, you, you relive it. It's not to judge yourself. You relive it so that you can analyze it, face it, and you see it for what it was and then take your power back from it. Be empowered. That's what it's all about. That's what healing is all about. Being empowered in your journey and whatever's occurred in your life. You know, if you, like, I'm a person, like, I love the book called The Secret. I love, love, love that. I love listening to the audio of that. Every once in a while, I'll get an inkling to, to tap in and listen to, to that audio book. And that book always has me just feeling so empowered. Like, I can take on the world. I can manifest whatever I want. But one thing that I have learned on my journey of life with that particular thing, because there were so many different versions of that and people were pissed off because they're like, you know, they're saying all you got to do is sit and be positive and this, this, and this will happen. But nobody ever talks about the journey of healing, how important it is to heal yourself. That is so urgent. It is so urgent. And I just, that's why I titled this, you are no one's fucking victim because those things happened for you not to you. You are so victorious. You're nobody's victim. And some people get so pissed off. Some people, unfortunately, like staying in victim mode. Woe, it's me. No, it's not. You're seeking attention. Face your demons. All of them. You're worthy of it. You are so worthy of healing. We all are. You know, put the bottle down. Put the cigarettes down. Put the recreational whatever drugs down. And face it. Face your shit. Deal with it. Deal with it. And the reason I bring up the secret is there's a verbiage in there. I cannot remember because it was several people who contributed to that book. And I forget his name, but he, he basically made a comment to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing, but he basically was like, okay, so your father was abusive. Your father was an alcoholic. Your, you know, your mother wasn't shit. I'm paraphrasing again. Like, okay. And, and, and I was like, damn, that's so fucked up. <laughs> when I heard that for the first time, however many years ago, however, it's true. How many people have you run into if they are truly honest about whatever's happened to them and if they have not buried it super deep within them, I have yet to meet a woman especially black women, which is something that's not talked about a lot in our community, the sexual abuse that goes on with us. It's not just a white person thing or any other race. It has nothing to do with your race. Your ethnicity has nothing to do with that. But I have yet to meet anybody 
especially black women, especially who's been through something, some type of sexual assault or abuse or some type of abuse, some type of abandonment from their father, you know, even white people. I'm talking about black people in particular right now because I am a black woman. And, and if, if I have any people who are black listening to this, I want them to be empowered. I want you to be empowered. Tell your stories, face your truths. All that shit, it's yours. You know, empower yourself from it. You'll be surprised how many people you then empower, even if that wasn't your, your purpose in that moment. That wasn't your intention, I should say. But um, I've talked about this on, a, on my personal Facebook page, this sexual assault. And I, you know, like I said, it had, I had buried it deep within. So I had never talked to my family or anybody about it. So if they listen to this, they may hear it on here for the first time. Or if they watched that particular Facebook live, they would have heard it then. And, you know, I, I just, I try to prepare myself for people who would say, well, why? Why didn't you say anything? Or why didn't, why did you feel this was the right way to talk about it? And you didn't say anything to your family? Because for one, it, it happened. I'm trying to calculate my age in my head. <laughs> it happened 24 years ago. I don't remember his name. I don't remember what he looked like. I know he was, you know, a black male. So me telling anybody this, they'll get riled up and upset and pissed off and then what? Because that's like, I, I just, that's always my question. Now what? It happened. Now what? I healed myself from it. I've I've faced it. I've accepted it for what it is. And I now use my voice to empower others to do the same. I mean, what more can I do? Encourage others to do the same. Speak your speak your truths, even if people don't believe you, which is disgusting. That's another subject for another day. But you are worthy of healing from whatever traumas you've been through in life. Again, whether it was rape, molestation, abandonment, all those things, discrimination, people calling you out your name, especially being under the LGBTQ umbrella. You know, people are real quick because, you know, people just stupid. They don't have shit else to say, but something demeaning to somebody. Calling people a fag and it's like, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, in Europe, I don't know if it's the entire continent or just different countries, but if I remember correctly, fag is a cigarette or something. So it means so many different things depending on where you go. And another thing that helps me while I was, as I go through this healing journey, because it is a journey, you know, it may be one that you're on for the rest of your life where things just come up. You know, shit comes up all the time for me. And the beautiful thing for me is I know how to handle it. You know, even if I sit in that moment and I cry about it, I'm purging, I'm releasing that shit. I'm releasing it. So I know how to handle it, you know? And sometimes it's not always wise to go and confront the person or persons who have contributed pain into your life. It's not always wise to go to them because... In that moment, what you're doing is still giving your power away. You're still saying this person has this um, emotional control or some type of control over you, and they don't. It's not about them. And furthermore, there's some people out here that do some shady, fucked up shit to people, and they will never apologize for it. And they'll look at you like, okay, and what you want me to do? And so you're seeking some type of apology from this person that you may never get. And so you're still stuck in that victim mode, which is why it's important for you to face your demons, accept them for what they are, and heal yourself from them. Whether that be seeking coaching services from someone like myself, or a licensed therapist, psychiatrist, do whatever you need to do to heal. Just make sure whoever it is that you pay to assist you in healing if it's something that traumatic you don't know how to handle on your own, just make sure they assist you in getting to the core root of everything that comes up. That is what I tell everybody when I see people saying they're seeing a therapist and, you know, for anxiety or whatever, tell them, I always tell them, make sure that that person, that 
therapists, that psychiatrist, whoever, you make sure they get down, they assist you in getting down to the core of where it came from. Nobody comes here with anxiety. It was born from something, whether it was your upbringing and, or somebody stuffing you in a closet and, you know, you end up getting claustrophobic or some shit because of something dramatic like that happening, whatever it may be. You know, so many people have been through so many different things and this episode would be way too long to just dissect so many things. And I just wanted to, I don't want, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm just trying to brush through, you know, talking about what's happened to me or what may have happened to you. It is nothing like that at all. I just want to get to the key point in saying, again, you are no one's fucking victim and deal, deal with your shit you know, deal with your shit. And I don't mean to be insensitive. That is not what this is about by any means. However, I just want people to empower themselves. You know, so many people turn to drugs and alcohol because they're suppressing. Everybody has their own version of suppressing and they suppress these things so deep. And so when they stop drinking or stop smoking or snorting, whatever, your choice of suppression is you know some people are really good at tuning people out blocking them out they will look at you with a straight face and they're not listening to shit you're saying it compartmentalize it somewhere and be like i ain't dealing with it but it is your responsibility to heal from your past trauma so that you can live a beautiful healthy peaceful loving life i really do believe that so, you know, just with all that being said, I do, I just, it's just so many things that so many of us have been through. And I just, I've gotten to this point in life, like, I just refuse to be a victim of anyone's, you know, you, I, if I had a uh, shit, a penny for every time somebody said something demeaning to me about me being Black, about me being a woman, telling me to go back to my country of Africa. When somebody says something stupid like that, Go back to your fucking country. <laughs> you almost, for me, I just laugh because first of all, people still say stupid shit like that in this new millennium we in. And it's like, did you not learn that Africa is a whole continent? It's not a country. You know, so you kind of have to, for me, anyway, not you, let me put this on me. For me, I laugh the shit off because it's like, <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you gonna tell me to go back somewhere and you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about but anywho with all that being said i just refuse for society to tell me that i'm less than because i'm black because i'm a woman because i'm bisexual because i'm married to a woman fuck you you know fuck you that's not how this works that's not how this works and all these hateful people out here do something better with yourself please like go away you know because hate Hate is taught. We all come here being loving, happy babies. Unless, you know, you were a baby that was born to drugs or something, then, you know, your journey was a little different because you had to be weaned off these drugs that you didn't ask for, you know? But I just, that's just, just where I am in life. I refuse to stay in this victim mode and walk around, oh, woe is me. Oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. No one likes me. No one, you know, first of all, people are not going to want to be bothered with you because it's so fucking negative. Empower yourself. You deserve that. Empower your fucking self. Empower yourself. Empower yourself. Get therapy of your choice. Cry that shit out. <laughs> Cry it out as often as you need to. Don't judge yourself, though. That is a very important thing. Is this The process is not to judge yourself at all. It's just to face your truths. It's to face your truths, to own your truths, to speak your truths, to live your truth. And you will be shocked how many people you empower by doing that. Again, that may not be your intention, but you will. You will empower people to be strong and look at their situation uh, in a different light, with a different lens. Hey, she can do that. She's been through way worse than I have. 
And that was something else I kept doing to myself. I, I used to always be like, oh, well, I was never raped. So A, B, C, D happening is not that big of a deal. Um, yes, it is. Your story is your story. Own your story. Own everything about it. It's yours. And be, and be empowered with it. I hope you don't get tired of me saying that, but like, seriously, be empowered in your story, in your truth. Because you are no one's fucking victim. You are no one's fucking victim. Those things happened for you. You have to see that though, not to you, for you, because you probably have a big purpose so that you can empower others to speak up. Do you know how many people do TED Talks talking about so many different things that has occurred in their life? They had to be brave and face their shit though. Again, that may not be your intention. Your intention may just be to heal so that you can be at peace. So this story won't keep running in your head and, and driving you nuts. But then so many doors open up after that, after you heal, after you face those demons and slay the fuck out of them. They don't control your life. They don't. You do. Take ownership of everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the positive. Take ownership of it all. It's so easy for us to always live in love and light and all the beautiful, positive things and da -da 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 -da. but nobody wants to face the quote unquote negative judgments, the negative things that's happened in our lives. You deserve that. You really do. Anywho, again, I hope you all go get this. Um, the one thing I love to say about this particular journal is if you go through it, like if you turn to this page, you see it's a bunch of blank pages with mine. It's prompted. It is a prompted journal. I'm sure you all can hear me turn the pages, I apologize. Like one of the sections, it says mommy issues, reflect and write them down. Because most of our problems, so to speak, quote unquote, start at home. Whether it's your biological mother and father or guardian or grandmother who raised you, most of our problems start from, from home, they just do. But the thing that I love about this is for you, it is, it's, it's, it's um, it's a beginner's guide and it's for you to really just sit and reflect. Let those things come up and come out and empower yourself from the stories. Like you have to get it. I do, I love this. I love this, a friend of mine who, who I just spoke to recently about this particular one. She actually doesn't do it in order. She said what she does is she, she just braces herself she thumbs through, you know, she'll just randomly turn to a page and tackle it that way. And I just thought that was so neat. I thought that was so neat that she figured out a different way to, to, to tackle her traumas, so to speak. Because I, I call them traumas because they're traumas because they just stay right here in the front of our mind or the back of our mind and, and we they come up and they play out in different parts of our lives like your trust issues, if you have trust issues with people, nobody comes here not being trusting of others. There's a reason you don't trust people. You gotta sit and figure that shit out. You gotta figure it out. Dig, dig deep within. Do you not trust people because your mom would always promise you or your dad would always promise you he would come he would take you, you know, to an arcade game. Like, you know, there was this place that was open years ago back in St. Louis. Um, if you've been following the podcast, you know, I'm from St. Louis, but it was called Tip or Tips, Tip, I think. It was at this mall that no longer exists. exists. But basically it was like downstairs at this mall, this big ass arcade room. You go down there and play video games and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, because your trust issue comes up from, a parental unit always saying, okay, when I'm done, we're going to go do this. And then when they got done, they didn't do it. So you started not trusting people because your parents didn't keep their word with you. I hope that makes sense as to how you get to the root of what is going on with your life. Because when you're healing, you don't have time to be, to have people bullshitting and playing with you, your emotions, your money. 
when, especially if you're paying somebody to assist you in your healing journey. Some people are really gruff in their delivery and how they talk about it. You know, <laughs> I've, you know, I've heard people even get down to the nitty gritty of saying, I don't give a fuck. And when they say that, like they literally mean, I don't care what happened to you, figure it out, get to the root of it. You know, and then you have some others who are just very kind and very delicate with it because, you know, if you were, goodness gracious, I couldn't imagine this, but if you were seven years old and was raped, that's, that's, that's traumatic as fuck. That has to be traumatic as fuck for somebody to spill your innocence in that way. And it, I, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, and I know people have been through that and it's heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. You know, so that a person who would be go through an experience like that, they may not want to hear somebody say, I don't give a fuck what happens to you because it may trigger them. And I, I did say I will talk about triggers. I'll talk about that on another episode. But whatever works for you, whatever works for you, like I said, if it's seeking coaching services, a therapist, a licensed therapist, a, a licensed counselor, a licensed psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever works for you, do that shit. You deserve that. You just you you deserve that peace. You know, I I am a huge advocate for mental health. I just am. I'm a huge advocate for a lot of stuff, but mental health, I really am, especially in the black community, because we like to sweep a lot of shit under the rug and not talk about a lot of shit, or we like to go to church and pray every fucking thing away. So we think it's just interesting. And, you know, I've discussed a lot of this stuff on this podcast. One of the episodes in particular would have been being uh, gay in a Black church. Well, if you have not listened to that episode, please go back and listen to that one. That one, I, I remember when I released that one, that one had some people not really listen to my podcast anymore. And I'm talking about people personally that I know. And I just, I just am at this point where I'm like, I don't give a fuck. It is what it is. Like this podcast is my experience, my observations. And if it wasn't the truth, why is it bothering you? <laughs> why is that triggering you? Because is it true? Just saying. But anywho, I do. I, I just appreciate you all so much. And again, I am an advocate for the LGBTQ community. I'm an advocate for mental health. I am an advocate for fucking peace. I am a, an advocate for joy. I am an advocate for happiness. I am. I just, we all deserve those things. And we, it's a lot of people projecting their nastiness onto a lot of people because they're not healed. And we just do, we have so many broken babies in adult bodies is disturbing it is imperative that we all work on ourselves and heal so we're not bleeding figuratively speaking on others especially those who haven't done a single thing to us it's important it's important and it's important for you first and foremost we have a lot of people out here who are always saying like i just saw a smoking commercial twice this morning and all I kept hearing was um you know these smoking commercials are showing how deep smoking can affect people's lives with them losing their teeth you know getting cancer of what kind in the throat and the lungs just different just different things I forget who who's the sponsor behind those particular commercials but one thing I noticed was they keep saying if you can't do it for yourself do it for those who love you you should do it for yourself first and foremost, which is why we have to get on a journey of self-love and self-care. Because if you keep doing stuff for those outside of you, it will never be enough because you're not doing it for yourself. You have to do it for yourself first. And then it'll trickle down to all those other people. That is a promise. That is a promise. I thank you all so much for tuning in. As you all go about your day, know that you are loved you are supported, you are enough, and you are for damn sure worthy. You are worthy of healing. You are worthy of peace. You are worthy of joy. You are worthy of loving on yourself first and foremost. 
Don't ever forget that. You're worthy of those things. Take care. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Under the Umbrella Podcast. Stay connected with us directly through utumbrella.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter, UT Umbrella One, and Instagram at UT Umbrella. If you would like to speak with us, please send us an email through contact at utumbrella.com. And as always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This now concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay fully up to date. Until next time, take care.